Well, welcome back to Life to Wild Ride. I'm back on the bus. I've not been on the bus for a few weeks, but uh, hopefully going to do a few things today. Um, actually, it's going to be a little difficult because first it's cold. I got the heat it just turned on, um, but I'm gonna pa you've probably seen pictures of it um, parked up on the lawn. So. I'm at a significant angle, um, but I don't want to move it. We just uh, we got it here, so it's out of the way for plowing snow. So we're just going to put around. I think we're going to try to finish up boards on this side right in here, and then into the bedroom. Basically, finish this side. So I got the boards on the floor here. I got to get out of the way anyways. So we're going to be working on that, and I can cut those right here in the bus and not have to go back and forth to the wood shop or anything like that. All right. So what I'm going to do is, you know, we got these are 12 footers up here, and I have. Um, I'm going to have to buy more, but i got five or six left here. And each one, if I cut it right, I cut a piece for this spot. So basically there's 12 feet here. And if I cut a piece to finish from here to this wall, then on that same one, cut from here to that wall. And then in the garage area, the piece left over will fit here almost exactly so 12 feet fills these three last sections all right so I got all the boards cut up and you see we got these ones finished here so this was already done here and then we just continued you can see the seam here a little bit but then it continues down and basically the rest of them are here and they'll go up in this area and then the leftover pieces are down here in the corner which will be enough to do this garage area, which will be absolutely last, because we have a lot of work to do back there. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna be doing this next, but we gotta do a little bit of work up here to attach the first um, first one too, and then we can work our way down and we'll add more insulation as we go uh, as well. All right, so we're still working away here. We're getting ready to cut this panel in half. Now, we picked this up as a test piece for the ceiling, and then we were gonna paint it white, and then we ended up getting the beadboard and like that better. So we have one piece of this. What we're going to do is, first of all, I don't like the color. We didn't buy it for that whatsoever. It's the old 70s brown. Um, we're going to cut it down the middle and then cut off the correct height for um, not these walls, but the corresponding ones on the other side in the bedroom. Making progress down here. We did get more of the ceiling up back here. And you see we got this up over here. Now there'll be a trim going down the center where these two come up to each other. So that'll be all trimmed out. And we got this wall up, or this panel up. We have the wall already there. And the piece I'm talking about now, we're gonna go on the back side of the bathroom and the back side of this closet. Now we have a dog out here, that's Leah. And dad's one of dad's dogs, one of dad's dogs. And she's visiting, how are you? She's too she good, girl. Come see me. She's going through trying to see me. Come here. What are you doing? Come here. Come here, Leah. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Huh? Say hi to the camera. Say hi to the camera. All right, so we're back on the bus this morning. We had to come to an abrupt stop yesterday. So we had some medical stuff to deal with with Dad. So I found out that um, he has fluid uh, now building up in his uh, on his brain, I guess, from where the surgery was done a few months back. So that's causing um, increased confusion and problems like that. So that's uh, unfortunate. Uh, we are going to make an appointment to to deal with that. Probably going to put a drain into something, I'm not sure. Uh, they'll tell us once we sit down and talk with them, we got to call them today. Uh, so, but we spent the afternoon yesterday at the hospital. But today, we're back on the bus and we are going to try to pick up right where we left off. So basically what I'm doing with this panel uh, is I'm cutting the angle for the bus. I don't have to cut it in a curve because it's going to be trim up there. And then uh, when it really uh, uh, curves in the back, on the corner of the bus back there. I'm just cutting this edge here. So and I'm just uh, using this little portable platinum roto razor. I have mixed reviews on it. But anyways, if you're interested in one, I'll put a link in the description of it. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it maybe later in this video.
So basically these walls back here are more than two feet and because this is only four foot wide when it's the whole whole thing I just cut it in half so I'm going to use it on both sides. It's going to leave a wider space here. I'm just going to use a wider trim board and nobody will know the difference. And like I said earlier, this is that old 70s brown, but I don't want to look at this. This is ugly. <laughs> it's terrible. And I don't want these grooves, uneven, fake board looking look. So we're putting it up backwards and we'll clean it all up and paint it white. Just like that. We'll nail her in and then we'll do the other side. Tracy's cuddled up to the heat. Cold. Huh. Yeah, but it's like probably like 45 in the bus now. 40, a solid 40. That's warm. It's not bad, 45. But we got the heater going. Anyway, uh, we've done it a little more on the bus. I'm getting cut in this outlet over here. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this tool real quick if you're interested in it. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to have a counter, um, a very narrow um, bureau, I guess, but a built-in with drawers in it here, a very narrow top because the bed will extend out into this area up to here. But above that, we want an outlet up here because this is where we might have a TV if we watch it in bed or if we're sitting on the couch, we'll be looking at this area here. I know you can't see what part of everything I'm pointing at, but the bottom line is the outlet is going to go in from the back side, but I'm going to cut the hole in right here. It'll be above the top. We'll be able to have our 12 volt uh, USB plus a regular 110 outlet right here. Um, so I know I was talking about this tool. I'll put a link in the description for it. It is the Platinum Roto Razor, and it's the RZ200. Um, I got mixed. I did a review on it on my Shane's main shop channel, and I was kind of hard on it because of the safety things on it and a few features, and I still feel the same way about those, but I have to say I have been using it quite a bit on the bus here, and um, it's come in pretty handy. One, it's not nearly as loud as a full-size skill saw, and it's doing a lot of little work I need. The issue that I really have trouble with is doing this type of work, plunge cuts. It has these guides where to stop to make sure you stop at the end, you know, when you're trying to cut out an opening. But you can't see any of your lines unless you draw them a lot longer because the blade's way over here and you can't see that. If you just draw your box opening, you can't see nothing. So you have to draw your lines a lot longer. Not this long, of course, but make sure you go past everything because, see, I don't have a line going up here. You would, If I put the saw on it, you can't even tell where you need to stop. So, you know, I guess it's not that big a deal, but it, you know, I don't know. I just, mixed feelings. And you got to push this thing forward to make it plunge. And you got to hold it. Then at the same time, you got to pull back on, back on that to make the blade, you know, to turn it on. So it's kind of, and, and the, the hand grip here is really thick for my hands. So it's kind of cumbersome. But anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and get this uh, cut in here. And then we'll show you what we're, you know, what we're dealing with. All right, in this case, the line that I need to follow is actually this groove, so I can use that to follow it. So we're just going to go ahead, and I'll just show you how this thing works. All right, so you can see I got that cut made here. All right, so I got that cut made. I'm going to make these two. Well, you can see I got to make sure I'm looking way beyond where the blade is because all this is covered up with safeties to make sure I'm following the line. And it does have a little pinpoint right here that you follow the line in the back. There you go. Now, I know it's going to go in from the back side, but let's just see how good my measurement is. Look at that. Let me just tuck this in the back side and we'll show you what we did. There we go. So, of course, it's not fastened in yet, and it will be flush with this, not sticking out, of course, because we already have a finished wall on. That's what we're doing. We're going to go ahead and stick the wires through on this, and there's another outlet in place. Now, another thing I'll just going to talk about is these outlets come with these nails in them. I pulled the nails out uh, for the sake of in the bus here and use screws to put these outlet box in place. It's stronger um, and I don't have to bang and bang on the you know the framework of the bus and you know anyways I just think it's better than pounding them in. I think it's more of a secure way of fastening it for the purpose of the bus. To me the safety is almost worse. I have a hard time holding it and getting it out of the way and then turning it on. Now because I wanted the outlet away from the wall on the other side a little bit, I got to put a spacer in here to attach the outlet box too. So we're just going to do that by putting these screws in. I don't really want this box sticking out any because we have our finished wall on. So when we put the outlet in place, uh, the outlet cover in place, 
it should be just fine. That's good and sturdy, it's not gonna move. And if we look at the other side, it should have pretty flush. And that's what we want. And the outlet cover will go around, cover it all up, once it's all on, we're good to go. Interesting shot. I almost kicked you over. I need one too. Can I toss it back in a second? How about you just let me measure for a second? Fine. 29 and a half. Tracy, hard at work. I'm just trying to go fast so you can. I know you don't want me kneeling on it, but. Yeah. All right, so we went and used um, a lot of the scrap beadboard up here. So you can see there's more seams than normal, and the seams are not exactly lined up with how the beadboard works for the pattern. But that's okay, because um, this is all going to be completely covered up with a cabinet, a built-in cabinet. But I want to at least have a wall up here for help, you know, insulating factor, plus it gives a finished look if you were to look in the back of the cabinet or something like that. Although I think it's going to be all drawers. But this is in the bedroom in the back. And the bed will pull out. You can actually see the tape on the floor here. And it will stop just prior to that cabinet system. And there's the outlet we put in, or, or not completely in yet, that will run a TV on top of here if we want. And we're going to have the full power options there as well, like you've seen in other videos. 12 volt, USB, 110. So whatever we choose to do in this room, for we'll have it. So one step closer, but we're just trying to use up the scraps and areas that we know we're not going to see. For example, on this side, the bed is going to be a built-in bed structure. So again, we have some more scrap stuff left over the beadboard. We're using every little piece up. So there's very little waste and keeps the cost down. So we're working on the other side now. Just cut this piece out. Again, leftover stuff from doing the ceiling. I cut the notch out here for around the um, fuel fill dog house it's gonna be just fine so we're gonna put this in and then I have these two leftover pieces that will finish it up I will say we've done pretty good about not having a lot of waste what do you say Trace yeah all right another piece up all right so we've done quite a few things today we're happy with what we've got done so far not sure how much longer we'll work out here, but we have to stop and do some cleaning. Now the problem is the place is a mess. So Trace and I are going to do a little cleaning. So, as you can see, uh, the bus is a lot cleaner now, and we can start again. It's not perfect because we're just going to make more of a mess. We just want to get the bulk of it because there's just so much stuff on the floor and things in the way. But now we can uh, get started on some new project. But I think we're going to wrap this video out here, and uh, if I start anything new, that'll be a new video. So, uh, we want to thank you for swinging by Life the Wild Ride. Don't forget to subscribe, comment. Tracy just loves the camera. I hate the camera. Um, I'll put a link in the description for that saw if you're interested. And my air gun that I've been using the Brad Nailer for a lot of stuff. So if you're any interest in those things, swing over to Amazon. Take a, take a look at it. Maybe you need it, maybe you don't. But we definitely appreciate you swinging by, watching this next section of the build of this bus. And everything that goes along with it. But uh, that'll do it for now. We'll see you next time. And don't forget, 
Life is a wild ride. I didn't say it this time. Maybe someday.